Hello Internet, and welcome to my review for Boruto Naruto Next Generations episode 72. Um, we last left off, Team 7 was acting as a bodyguard for Onoki, uh, who was in town for the Five Kage Summit uh, to discuss the Otsutsuki clan. Um, when Mitsuki started having a crisis of identity uh, regarding whether or not he has free will, or whether or not he just kind of imprinted on Boruto like a chick. Um, and then at the end, Misa got a mysterious letter, burned it, and then seemingly attacked um, the guard, the Konoha guards, and ran away. Um, and so, the first thing I want to bring up is my initial theory as what was actually going on that I think has been fairly solidly debunked by the end of the episode, but I still want to bring it up just to talk about it, um, is that... Uh, my initial theory was that the the Mitsuki we see attacking the guards is not Mitsuki, but another Mitsuki clone. Because, you know, Mitsuki is one of millions of clones, or probably not that many, but, you know. Uh, and so my first thought was that it was a Mitsuki clone, and I thought everything was kind of leading up to that, and that Mitsuki leaving was going to be either trying to track down the clone, or completely unrelated to that. Probably not completely unrelated, but, you know, as an opposing force to that group. Um, uh, but then the scene at the end with the white snake kind of blew that theory out of the water as we, as we revealed that something, either running away or whatever, is Mitsuki's will. Uh, more on that in a little bit, but, you know, I, that, my initial theory was that it was a Mitsuki clone, and I think the episode kind of, um, eventually blows up that theory. Uh, and so, something, something I want to bring up. Is something the episode really hammers in, uh, but just my initial reaction is just how ironic it was. Boruto is like super confident, yeah, I know everything about Mitsuki. And literally the whole point of the episode is that Boruto knows nothing about him. Uh, it, was an, it, it was a smart way, it was a simple way, I feel, to um, introduce that little that discrepancy. Um, throughout the, that, that really is kind of the point of the episode, how little anyone knows about Mitsuki. Um... So yeah, that was that was a simple that was it was a simple but effective way to really start up that conflict. Um, but anyway, once the gang realizes, so uh, so first Boruto and Sarada are like hanging out, waiting for a mission to start, or waiting for Mitsuki to get there so that they can tell him the meeting is canceled. And then they go to Mitsuki's apartment because uh, Mitsuki never shows up, and that's that's how they like, initially find out that he's missing. And so as they're kind of looking around the apartment and really like noticing how sad and empty it is which was honestly kind of reminiscent of the last Angels of Death episode, but that's a whole other thing. Um, Boruto notices the framed picture of himself on Mitsuki's bedside. And as, as cute as that is, Boruto, you'd expect to be kind of creeped out by that, right? You know, there's a framed picture of him that I don't think he really remembers being in uh, on Mitsuki's bedside. But his reaction is just kind of quiet. He doesn't really have any reaction to that. He just kind of looks at it and he puts it down and then he goes about his day. Which I found odd. But you know what? There, There's enough great shit going on in this episode. I thought it was... I should have mentioned earlier, this is a great episode. Um, but everything else pretty, really after that really makes this episode so good. Uh, so first off, there's this really nice tone going on. Um... They're, they're right after they go to Mitsuki's house, there's a conversation between Boruto, Sarada, and um, the new Inochika Cho, Team 10, Inoji and Chikadai and uh, Chocho, um, about, you know, everything's going on, about Mitsuki being missing, about, um, first off, about, you know, why doesn't Boruto know more about Mitsuki, and then they're discussing um, the Jonin all gathering together for a mysterious, um, mysterious meeting over at the Hokage offices, um, and I just, I, there's, there's just a lot of mystery in that scene. They're kind of like, the, the music and the character acting, it's all really, really comes together to make the scene seem really, it's kind of somber. Um, it's, it's nice. Boruto is normally a very, you know, like, rambunctious, uh, series. Uh, and it's nice to see it just kind of, like, chill out every now and then. Uh, I don't think chill out, chill out is the right word. More like, um, more like be sad, I guess, or somber, I guess. Um, but after that, the gang goes to the Hokage office to try to investigate, see what's going on with Mitsuki, 
and the coming to Konohamaru, um, who seems genuine, he seems, like, he's definitely, you know, we, we know that he's hiding the fact that there was the attack on the guards earlier in the day, um, but he does, he doesn't really seem like he's lying, you know, he seems like he's clearly not telling them stuff, but he's not, he's not really actively hiding anything, I guess, it's a weird way of putting it, but I don't know. Especially because by that point, he does not know Mitsuki was at the gates, which you will find out later on. Um, but yeah. So then, uh, Boruto and Sarada, suspecting Konohamaru is hiding stuff from them, go sneaking around, end up right outside the Hokage office, where uh, Boruto, not Boruto, Naruto, Shikamaru, Sai, um, Konohamaru, and Kakashi are all there, uh, working stuff out. Um... And at th this is where everyone finds out, including Boruto and Sarada, that Mitsuki was presumably with, or at the, um, attackers, at, at the gates, because Sai found Mitsuki's headband that we saw at the end of last episode. Um, and then who should come in but Tsunade, which again, where was she during the Five Kage Summit last week? Because that's absolutely where she should have been, because she is a previous Kage. Um... But Tsunade's here for, I think, the first time in Boruto. I don't think she showed up before. Uh, at least not that I can remember. Um, so yeah, Tsunade's around again. Uh, she seems to be actually kind of... It seems like she'll have an active role in this arc, I imagine. Um, you know, all things considered. Given that, you know, Orochimaru and Mitsuki are being very important to this arc, I imagine. Um, and for a second there, they were so close to revealing that Mitsuki was Orochimaru's son... And I thought they weren't going to do it. Because, you know, the scene changes. Uh, but then, eventually, uh, Naruto reveals it to everyone. Once they change locations to the lab place where In Ino gets the memories out of the uh, unconscious tuning. But first, before that, the elders are alive. The fucking advisor fucks from Shippuden. Somehow... 20 years later. How old are they? Is old age done a thing in this show? Do people just age, age, get, getting eternally older until they're killed? Is that the only way to die in Naruto? Because <laughs> I don't think anyone has died in, of old age. Even like people like Onoki and the advisors, who should definitely be dead. I mean, maybe did Toby, did Toby Rama and Hashirama die of old age? I don't remember. Uh, I don't, they might have. I'm not entirely sure, though. Um, but yet, the elders are still alive, and as we find out, they are still the worst. They are continually the worst. Um, you know, once they find out that um, that Mitsuki is Orochimaru's son, their immediate response is to just like, "Yep, he's he's a danger." I do they specifically ask to execute him? I don't quite remember, but they might. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, but Konohamaru, um, is like, no, me, the, even if, you know, um, even if the, the, the unconscious guy saw Mitsuki, there has to be some explanation. Mitsuki's a good kid. He's not like this. Um, admittedly, that is before, of course, um, Naruto reveals Mitsuki's parentage. Um, but you know, go, go, come on, go, Good on Konohamaru, standing up for Mitsuki, standing up for his boy. That's my man. Um, and then, of course, everyone finds out who Mitsuki's parent is. And, you know, as much as it makes sense, given, you know, the gravity of everything going on, you know, there's been attack an attack on the village, and the Tsunade just found out Orochimaru might be playing a part in it, I'm still kind of sad Tsunade had no over-the-top reaction to the idea of Orochimaru having a son. Like, Orochimaru has a son is an intensely ridiculous concept. It's one that we've all kind of accepted, because like, cause Mitsuki's been, you know, a character for... When did Mitsuki first get revealed? The Boruto movie? Or was, he, was he in Chapter 700? Or... I don't remember. But let's say he was in 700. I'm pretty sure he was in Gaiden at the very least. So since, you know, for... It's been three and a half years since Gaiden first came out. Um, so we've all kind of gotten used to Mitsuki's existence, and Mitsuki being Orochimaru's son... We've all kind of accepted that as, like, a part of life. But, like, Sunat, I, I wish Sunat had reacted more. You know, sure, her reaction makes sense, given the weight of the story. But, like, I, I want her to, like, be like, what the fuck, Orochimaru had a son? 
Uh, and then, as I mentioned before, the elders are the worst, and they're all like, oh no, you should have done something about Orochimaru's son. Um, and then, after that, Boruto and Sarada, who were eavesdropping on all this, leave, head to the riverside, uh, and have this deep conversation about what they should do, about whether or not, you know, Orochimaru being Mitsuki's parent changes anything. Um, and I really like this, you know, they go at each other, and they're, um having these, like, important, emotionally resonant conversations. But I love the way they find out Mizuki's parentage in the manga. In the manga, It's super funny. Uh, and I'm kind of upset we won't get the card scene from the Mujina arc. Uh, manga readers know what I'm talking about there. Um, but you know what? This, this is, objectively speaking, this is a better story uh, decision. But, like, the card scene is so funny. All... Ev I said it in my manga videos, but every time Boruto and Sarada find out something new about Mitsuki, it's always so funny. Um, like a couple chapters ago when they find out, found out how he was born, it's wild. It's super funny. Um, and then, so Boruto, so Sarada, as I recall, questions whether or not they should follow Mitsuki because, you know, Mitsuki seems to be a traitor and shouldn't we, you know agree with the village on this and boruto fucking goes at her specifically there's a line i think it's like shouldn't you know that just because so like so shouldn't you know that you shouldn't always judge someone for one time betraying the village or something it's something that's very clearly an attack on sasuke um and i love it i, I can't for the life of me i can't remember the exact line but it was like you you of all people should know better you know sasuke Sasuke Uchiha is your dad. <laughs> and, like, fucking savage Boruto. Um, but after that, Boruto is hanging out on the roof of the gate, kind of, like, ruminating on everything that's happened, where he, I think he, like, sees a little, like, rustling in the bush below, and he jumps down, and he goes to investigate it, and he sees Mitsuki's little white snake devoured by, like, a puddle of mud. And I will remind you, we saw one of the attackers on the gate using that similar style of, like, mudjutsu, as I recall. Um, and so my kind of theory is that that's kind of a metaphor for the arc. You know, the mud swallows the snake, representing Mitsuki, and Boruto destroys the mud, freeing Mitsuki. That's kind of how I imagine, you know, go this whole thing going. And that the this is my will uh, message that Mitsuki left Boruto is either a way, like, Mitsuki doesn't want to be, um, either they have, they have something on him that, like, you know, it, me, the, their, their initial, um, uh, way to get Bor uh, Mitsuki to come in that letter that we saw last episode was something like, uh, if you come, if you don't come with us, we'll go after Boruto and Sarada. Uh, I did see a theory saying that Udashiki is behind all this, um, I, I could see that being true. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, though. Um, but anyway, the mud, the mud represents this other group, whether it's Udashiki or someone new, I don't really know. Um, and that Boruto, when he destroys the mud, represents Boruto eventually saving Mitsuki from this group. Uh, that's kind of my theory as to how the arc is going to go, in, like a, in a very broad strokes way. Just because we know from reading the manga, Mitsuki does not end up betraying the village for good or anything because he's got to be around for the next arc um but by the end uh sarada Sar uh, boruto moves to leave the village in the middle of the night and sarada meets him at the top of the gate rises about to leave in a scene that i could not help but find incredibly reminiscent of the start of sasuke retrieval when sasuke going to leave the village with the sound four is stopped by sakura Except this is very different from that, because for one thing, Boruto is not going to be evil, and if anyone, Mitsuki is the Sasuke of the story. Um, and Sakura goes with him. I mean, not Sakura, Sarada. Sarada goes with him. Sarada goes with him. Uh, and that, I just got hyped. Just seeing Boruto and Sarada, you know, against the world. Sarada's like, if you do this, everyone will be after you. And Boruto's like, yeah, they will. And Sarada's like, all right, well, if we're doing that, uh, let's take that snake to Rochimaru. <laughs> and Boruto's like, huh? You're coming too? And like, yeah, hell yeah, she is. Borusara against the world. I'm super hyped for this arc. 
Though, one last thing. I do have one fairly, um, fairly minor question in the grand scheme of things, but it's bothering me. So, the, the whole village crisis right now is because some guards were attacked, right? So why, after the village just got attacked, are there no guards? This gate is unguarded. Why? <laughs> what the fuck? That's so, so what? Ah, all right. I mean, that, that's a minor thing. Other than that, this episode is great. Uh, sets up the new conflict with Mitsuki and this mysterious group. Uh, I imagine next week or the week after we'll start to see Mitsuki actually interacting with these people. Um, that's just my kind of theory based on like the timeline of the arc. I have no idea how long the arc is going to go for. Uh, hopefully it won't be done by October. You know, it'll, it, I'm, based on what's going on in the manga right now, uh, I can't imagine we'll be getting back into the manga before 2019, just because they're, like, they could do, the next arc in the manga is like five chapters, which would be maybe four or five episodes, maybe. Um, then beyond that, we just reached a point where they could maybe insert some filler, because after that, those five chapters, it's one, really one story straight on through, one trip outside the village. Um, and, like, maybe if manga readers would know, after this last chapter, they might be able to fit in some filler, I don't know. But they really are kind of, like, running out of space for filler at the moment, so I'm actually going to be having a lot of filler before we move into Mujina. Um... But still, if the filler is as fun as is as you know good as these as these two episodes have been, I am more than excited for it. Give us give us a long early Shippuden style filler arc that's like good and well placed and well paced and give us interesting villains. You know, give us give us a three tail style filler arc. I barely remember anything about the three tails arc. I just, I just remembered I fucking loved it when I first watched it. it, it that that's the good filler arc right there. Make this a three tail style filler arc. Um. But yeah, that's really my thoughts for this episode. I loved it. Hope you all loved it too. And love the video. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe or do whatever the fuck you want. I don't really care. And as always, people, keep kicking ass and I'll see you in the future. Bye.